Hi guys, I'm Talisa with Talisa Aquarist, and I have some exciting things to share with you guys today. Um, as you guys have known, I have been trying to breed King Koi and Fable, or that was the plan. I guess I hadn't announced that I was trying to breed them yet, but I've been trying to breed them, and today is day five of conditioning them, and I had just been letting them see each other for a few hours a day. And I don't think they've spawned yet, but this is kind of leading into something else I was wanting to share. I've been wanting to do a an experiment with betta fish. I had talked to the owner of the local fish store that I go to, and he had said he had a buddy that had a 75 gallon planted tank that he kept two betta fish in, and they would spawn and raise the fry together and the fry were just left together and then those fry because they'd never been separated those betta fish as adults could live in tanks together peacefully and so that kind of got my wheels turning in my head or the wheels turning in my head and i was like huh i should do that like you know, he mentioned betta fish live together in the wild, right? And I know some domestic betta fish are more dominant and aggressive than wild betta fish. But I just started thinking, like, maybe betta fish aren't as aggressive as we, like, think they are. Maybe if they had a tank that replicated their normal, like, where they originate from, then maybe they could actually live together peacefully. So I am going to do a beta experiment. I can't start it yet because we're going to be, like I don't wanna get a big 75 gallon tank that's planted and then be moving it. So I'm going to wait until we move and then I'm going to do this experiment. But I've already started it to an extent, just not with the size of tank I wanted. So I've been trying to condition King Koi and Fable, and I just had her in a cup in his tank. You guys have seen the 40 gallon breeder tank that I have sitting on the floor. And I would add her in there in a cup, and she jumped out multiple times, and she wasn't ever hurt because she had plenty of spaces to hide and get away from because I have plants in there. And so that got me thinking like, oh, like he didn't hurt her. He didn't nip her fins, nothing. And so, and this is like an aggressive betta fish. So when I bought him from the breeder I bought him from, she said like, I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I tried breeding him and he knocked the cup over that the female was in and he killed her. And so I was like, okay, you know, that's all right. I'm still gonna go ahead and buy him. And I'm just going to, like she had said some things she could have done differently to prevent that. So I was like, okay, I'll just do those things, right? Um, well, the female ended up jumping out anyway. And while he was aggressive, you know, he chased and stuff, which is very normal for betta fish. He didn't nip her fins and he didn't harm her. Uh, so I decided yesterday, I left them together for a few hours and I released her and I watched them really closely for a few hours, you know, I would get up and do things, but I was always going in and checking on them and watching their behavior for a while. And the behavior was like dominant, but not really aggressive. Like he would chase her some and she would just get away and then she'd go hang out. Like her, she's not stressed. She's like, she's not pale indicating she would be stressed. Her fins aren't nipped and she swims around the tank. And if he gets upset, then she just kind of swims away and goes somewhere else where he can't see her. And I haven't had an issue. I left her in there uh, most of the day yesterday and all night last night. And this morning she is still doing well and still does not look stressed. So this is a 40 gallon tank that I added 15 gallon of water to, and then I just took some extra um, like hides and stuff that I used to use that I hadn't thrown away, I just saved them. And I added those to the tank so she can swim through those and King Koi can also swim through those. Which this is begs to question now, because they can get along semi peacefully in, a, in 15 gallons of water, with enough stuff in the tank to obstruct their views of each other, then they should get along that much better in a 75 gallon tank with lots of plants. You know, they should be able to each have their own side of the tank and when they're ready to breed, they should be able to come together and breed and the dad would raise the fry and the mom can just kind of go off and do her own thing again. 
and I should be able to leave all the babies together and raise them up and start selling them. And I should be able to sell the babies in groups for those that have large tanks that are heavily planted. I should be able to just sell them, you know, five beta fish and they could all live together peacefully. That's my thinking anyway. But again, I haven't done the experiment yet, but I'm quite confident the, that the experiment will go well because I have, you know, King Koi and Fable and 15 gallons of shallow water and you know, they haven't killed each other. They don't look stressed. I don't think they've spawned yet, but I won't really be able to tell that because this bubble nest is under an almond leaf. So I won't be able to see if there are eggs in the nest or not. So I'm just going to wait either until he becomes too aggressive or until I see baby beta fish swimming around, then I'll just remove Fable. And if he becomes aggressive towards the fry, I will remove him. But if he doesn't become aggressive towards the fry, I'm just gonna leave him with the fry. But this is also, if I can get a good spawn from King Koi and Fable, then I should be able to keep the nicest looking male and the nicest looking female and never separate them. And then when the time comes, I can add them together to the 75 gallon tank and they should live very peacefully together since I've never separated them. And hopefully they would spawn and I should just have a peaceful beta fish tank, which I guess just begs to question, have beta fish been misunderstood? Are they aggressive because they're separated at like from the time they're what, a few weeks old and then they don't see any other fish ever? And while I do realize that the domesticated betas have been, like they've been bred to be aggressive. So I do realize that they're going to be kind of dominant um, territorial, but if you have a tank that is heavily planted, and I've seen some people do this. Um, Alex over at Fishery is a guy who has a video out. He has like four beta fish living in a 20 gallon long planted tank. Um, I would prefer to have a larger tank, but they're living together peacefully. So I just, yeah, I'm going to do an experiment. And the more I'm learning about this, I think that beta fish could be kept together under certain conditions. And those conditions would be that their tank needs to replicate the home where they came from, you know, the rice fields and the stream, well, not streams, but large bodies of water ponds and stuff that are heavily planted and soft acidic water that helps relieve stress as well. Um, so I don't know, I'm pretty excited about this experiment. I'm pretty confident that it will go well because like I said, I have two beta fish living in 15 gallons of shallow water and they're living together somewhat peacefully you know like they're not harming each other at least they're not unsafe i wouldn't be keeping them together if it was unsafe to do so so i'm super excited i'm a little sad that i can't do the experiment until we move but i am started on it to an extent and it's gone well for the you know one day <laughs> that i've done it so Stay tuned. Um, if this picks your interest and you're like, mm, maybe she's onto something, please subscribe if you haven't already. And I'm super excited to see where this heads. And I will also update you guys if I get a spawn from them or if I just choose to separate them and wait um, until I can have a better breeding setup. Thank you guys for watching.